Let's go ahead and get into it, guys. We've got a lot to get to when it comes to the world of sports. And as always, we like to keep you guys informed on all of it. So let's start off with SEC Media Days. One of the big things right now, because we haven't really gotten into SEC Media Days as we're talking, uh, it, one of the big talking points is about Oklahoma and Texas officially being part of the SEC. Let's just give a round of applause to that, boys. I mean, just excited. I know Blake and I really excited. I'm a diehard Oklahoma fan. Blake's a diehard Auburn fan. We're trying to plan something out where hopefully, one way or another, either this year or next year, we're going to be visiting uh, one of the campuses and going to a game to each other, at least tailgate, um, because, you know, Bidenomics and, uh, you know, the economy is not so great. Um, but – who knows? Uh, we, we might be we might be able to squeeze in squeeze in the ticket prices and everything. But yeah. Oklahoma, Texas, I, I will say this. So I think there's a lot of delusional fans, a lot of delusional Oklahoma fans, a lot of delusional Texas fans. We're going to come in here, run the SEC. Look back at Missouri. We're better than Missouri. They won. They or they got to the SEC championship their first year. I think the second year too, right? Mm -hmm. Am I, am I rem yep. remembering that right? So yeah, I mean we're better than them. We're going to come in here and dog walk. You guys don't know who you're messing with. That's just stupid talk. Texas did very well last year. Oklahoma did very well last year. And, and I think Oklahoma showed the – honestly, I can't think of many teams that showed the, as big of a jump as Oklahoma showed last year in, in just overall production. Uh, and, of course, there was a couple of, of games that they just lacked performance. I think they got their heads a little too high after beating Texas uh, and struggled against teams like uh, UCF, obviously struggling against Kansas and Oklahoma State. Uh, Oklahoma State was another one where I think Oklahoma fans will, will have a lot of complaints about maybe what the, the guys in stripes were doing. Um, but overall, two games that you dropped that you should not have dropped, and you were that close to getting to another Big 12 championship game and possibly winning that because you already beat Texas once. Uh, and so I, I will say to be reasonable about it from a reasonable Oklahoma fan, I'm extremely excited to go to the SEC. I think the atmospheres that we're going to be playing against, uh, I think that the overall uh, just the, the, the schedule being tougher, I think that's a good thing for Oklahoma because what did you see when Oklahoma went against Alabama, when they went against Clemson, when they went against Georgia, uh, when they went against LSU in the playoffs? What happened to Oklahoma in those games? They end up getting killed because they're not ready for that. They, uh, obviously, back then, a different style Oklahoma. So I'm very excited for that aspect. Do I think we're going to have a little bit of acclimating to do? Yeah, I'm kind of expecting – I expect a nine-win season. I hope for a 10-win season. Worst case scenario, we get an eight-win season. Uh, if we could get 11, that'd be amazing. But the, that's just how tough the SEC is, and I'm not expecting that 10 or 11 because I understand that this is the toughest conference in college football, especially when you're adding two more big name brands that are are on the up and coming. Uh, and so, you know, I'm I'm obviously there with you. But for the SEC fans thinking that, you know, I, I've seen a lot of this that Oklahoma and Texas are going to come in here and be lucky to have six wins. I don't think that's the case. That's definitely not the case. You've got three non-conference games that I believe you can win, and there's three conference games that are easy to to find a way to win. And then maybe even you know add that up to five for each team. Uh, I, I definitely don't think they're going to have a huge struggle coming into the conference. I think they're going to have to they're going to have to adjust. They're going to have to find uh, what's comfortable for them within the conference. I think by year two, year three, you start to see those two teams fit right in with the SEC. We're right in the maybe the middle, upper middle of the pack, uh, much like maybe your Auburn Tigers. But I mean, Blake, starting off with you, man, do you think OU and Texas are ready for the SEC from what you've seen? You know, just looking back at last year. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think they're not ready. Um, I, I definitely think Oklahoma on the football side of things uh, got the tougher draw with their schedule. Yeah. I think Texas, uh, I think their schedule favors them quite a bit. Uh, I think they have the, the chance to win 10, 11, maybe 12 games. Uh, I just, I think their schedule is, is very, very favorable this year with everything that they return. Uh, they're, they're bringing back a very nice team. Oklahoma, there's a little bit of work to do with that schedule. They got dealt a really tough schedule. Um, and I don't doubt either one of these head coaches. I think BV and, and I think Sark are two of the best in college football. Um, I think Oklahoma going to Venables uh, was the perfect choice just because he's hard-nosed and, and really gritty on the defensive side of the ball. And when you're making this change, I think that's the way you want to go in the Southeastern Conference. I know college football has kind of opened it up offensively, 
but uh, I, I think it's going to play well for Oklahoma in in the long run. You know, I, looking like you said, three, four, five years down the road, I think this plays out for Oklahoma, and I think it's a good thing. And Oklahoma's recruiting, and that's just another thing that you can throw on your list to say to recruits is when you go on in-home visits, you don't have to say, hey, we play in the Big 12. You, you now get to say, hey, we play in the SEC. And I, I think that's that's going to work well in your favor, and I think it works well in Texas's favor, and I think it hurts Texas A&M in the long run. I really do. I, I think Texas A&M is going to be the, the school that really suffers from this the most uh, because they're really, in my opinion, uh, if you're a Texas A&M fan out there listening to this, I'm sorry, but your little brother – to Texas, and uh, you know, you were little brother to Oklahoma in the Big Twelve, in my opinion. So, you know, I I do think that when it comes to football this year, Oklahoma might just because of the schedule might have a tougher road, but in the end, they're both two top ten, top fifteen college football programs of all time. They're gonna adjust. They're going to be great, and I think it is awesome that they are in this conference. Josh, Jeremy, when I look at other sports, I also think it is awesome. When I look at baseball, Oklahoma, Texas, I think that is awesome. You're already coming into the greatest college baseball conference ever made. Five straight national championships. Ten out of the last 15 national championships have come from the Southeastern Conference. This conference is no joke when it comes to baseball, and you're adding two elite programs to your list uh, just to make the conference that much stronger. When you look at softball, Oklahoma and Texas, they played for the national championship. It was a great series. Oklahoma with the dominance of four straight national titles. You're now bringing both of those programs into a conference that dominates college softball as a whole, man. The the Southeastern Conference has been uh, at the top for years and years. Uh, teams like Alabama, uh, you got LSU, man. Arkansas has come out of nowhere. They've been great. Georgia's been to Oklahoma City. Uh, Florida, they've won their fair share. Tennessee, back in the day, they've had their – uh, their, their trips to OKC. So uh, when I look at uh, a sport like golf, we look at, at Texas and Oklahoma. Right? They've been there in golf. They can, competed at the highest level in golf. Uh, I don't want to toot, toot our horn, but the Auburn Tigers of the 2024 NCAA Men's Golf uh, National Championship winners this year. So uh, you, that's just another sport that the SEC has dominated. And when I look at basketball, you know, Oklahoma hasn't been their usual self, but they will uh, get on a run. They've produced great players, Buddy Hill, Blake Griffin, Trey Young, uh, Texas, Kevin Durant. Now, I could keep going down the list for those schools. Uh, it's just you're bringing two rich don't tradition for, don't forget schools. Don't uh, Austin, Austin Reeves in there, too. Or that oh, guy. Man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Dude's, dude's a little bit of a danger. He is. He is. Uh, the, the Lakers. The Lakers got a good one. Uh, but you're two. You're bringing two rich tradition schools into the best conference uh, in college sports, and I couldn't be happier. I, like I, I think when I first heard uh, a year and a half ago that this was happening, I just thought to myself, I, I, I said, you know, this is awesome for college sports that these two schools are the ones that we're bringing because we heard Miami, maybe Florida State. I don't think those bring the juice that Oklahoma and Texas brings. And so I'm just not looking at the college football side of things. I'm looking at all the sports, man. I think these two schools bring it in everything. And uh, and also they bring the money side of it too. Yeah. So when you start breaking down, yep. you know, the – the economics and and you start breaking down all of this stuff, the fan bases and and the boosters and all of that, man. I, I just think it, it's it's a win win for the schools and the conference. Uh, I I love it, and I, and I know Josh, you're gonna love it. it. It's just I think the Southeastern Conference brings out a competitive drive uh, in in the fan base and in the players that that are at the schools, man. It, it's well, just and- it's different. Yeah, I mean that aspect, and as a fan, uh, you know, like getting to travel to to stadiums is is really fun to me. But I, 
you know, I, I, I've been to Lawrence, I've been to Manhattan, yeah. I've I've been to Ames. Uh, I'm trying to think what else, what other Big Twelve schools I've have I been to. I mean, there, there's there nothing. I mean, there, there's some decent like Ames did some renovations, made their their stadium look a little bit nicer. Uh, you know, yeah. Lawrence has a nice little stadium, and they're going to build, um, but. It's nothing like going to Death Valley. It's nothing like going to Jordan Hare. It's nothing like going yeah. out to to you know out to Georgia and, and looking between the hedges, going down to the swamp. Yeah. It's it's not like going to Tuscaloosa. There there's no atmospheres like that in the Big Twelve. And honestly, Texas and Oklahoma just didn't fit in. And I think that's a big yep. reason why it's like, hey guys, we keep on building, we keep on showing off that our brand is worth something. Um, but Jeremy, I mean, ultimately, I I know you, you've been you've been kind of hopping on the the Sooners fan wagon with me a little bit just because uh, you know you you being around me so much uh, you know and going down to Norman with me uh, and so I mean how exciting is this to to see I mean do you think you think Oklahoma and Texas are are ready to go over there to the best conference in college football? They have to be ready just because they have to understand this ain't no regular time where we're where we're used to seeing Oklahoma just curb stomp everybody. This is a whole new animal that we got to endure for this upcoming season and here on yeah. out. But Texas and Oklahoma, they'll definitely be they'll be doing well. Then of course it's going to be one of those learning curves to where you got to adjust to all these new teams and everybody. But Oklahoma and Texas, without a doubt, they're definitely going to be ready to say the least. And I mean. You said it the best, Josh. I mean, it's it's one thing to go and see these atmospheres. Like, you've obviously, like, you listed off Ames and Lawrence and all that stuff like that. But I'm just really excited to see Oklahoma versus, like, LSU and Alabama and, and all these teams that everyone says, oh, the, if these guys come over to our conference, we can absolutely curb stomp them. But, I mean, hey, you got to slow your roll here a little bit just because you look at what we can do in our – old conference doesn't necessarily mean we're not going to be holding everything back here. We can definitely throw a lot of surprises out of you that you guys haven't even seen us do. And looking at just the overall aspect, Blake said it the best. It's, it's one thing to watch a particular team in one particular sport, but you look at the overall aspect of the school just in general, it's going to be fun. I'm really looking forward to to seeing softball as well, just because I know, Josh, you also got me on to Oklahoma softball as well. I'm nothing like what you're going to be for a, for a great fan, but, I mean, um, it's definitely going to be fun. I mean, you, you'll definitely see Oklahoma, a lot of the fans shine those four rings. Don't, yeah, you'll see that, but, I mean, this is going to be a complete different animal, and you got to definitely work your, work your tail off here to keep – adding on to those rings because this is a whole new animal and it is officially the best conference in America. Well, and, and you got to think too, I think a lot of people that just think that Oklahoma and Texas are going to come in there and just get, you know, Molly womp. They're going to be, you know, they're going to wipe the floor with them. Y'all can slow your own. No. Yeah. You, you have to realize that these two, these two brands ran the big 12 since the big 12 started. You go back the last 10 years, Oklahoma, obviously being the more don, dominant, but like you, you go back to 2000 on. Uh, you know, Oklahoma is one of four teams to have won uh, four, four or more titles in the last, I think it was 50 years. So I mean, this is this is a program that's known. They they know what it's like to to have tasted that. Uh, Oklahoma's been to the playoffs. They've been to the to the uh, you know to the uh, uh, national championship several times since 2020 area. I guess 2000 maybe. Uh, you know, and so so they've they've been there several times. They know what that that tastes like. They know. You know, they, they, they've had a little bit of taste of that. So, I mean, I think they fit in just fine. Texas now had had their taste. Of course, they've they've won, uh, you know, a couple of national championships, and then they've even uh, been there to the playoffs now. Uh, you know, so I, I, I don't think that you can just write these two teams off. And they're both – I think a lot of people recognize Oklahoma. They look at Oklahoma, uh, really Texas too. Texas, just a few years ago, was just not the same old Texas. They kept on saying they're back, but they weren't. Uh, they're sitting there winning only maybe eight games in the Big 12. Uh, they I think people look back at, at Oklahoma and Lincoln Riley's last year there where they only won nine games didn't make it to the big 12 championship game and then uh you know the year after brent venables takes over and they only go six and six that's all people remember they don't remember the huge success that you just saw out of that oklahoma defense the the complete flip of the script that you saw from that oklahoma defense and also on top of that i think people are acting as if you lost dylan gabriel therefore you don't have a quarterback without remembering Brent Venables just recruited out of his mind for last year coming into who will be freshmen this year uh, and then going on to, to next season, those new freshmen coming in, that 2025 class, he's in the top seven right now. Uh, and, and you know, you look at, 
at you know Jackson Arnold. I think he's going to step in. I think he's going to be acclimated just fine. If not, we've got a next man up. Uh, you know, looking over at Texas, you've got uh, Quint Ewers, and if he doesn't do well, guess what? You've got a Manning boy right behind him, uh, and you've got a defense that's going to step up and show that they're they're strong enough to 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 at least participate in the SEC. So I think a lot of people are writing these teams off for what they remember in recent history rather than seeing the progression that we've seen, uh, like Texas just now making it to the to the you know team of four playoff. I think you're on mute. Can right I throw there. this in real quick, Josh? Uh, oh, no, we, we hear you. Sorry. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah, okay, cool, cool. Um, no, um, I wanted to throw this in there real quick. I saw something on Twitter uh, the other day with – Jake Crane said that the grind of the SEC was just a little different, right? And what I think people get twisted with that statement is, I guess in the Big 12 when you get like Iowa State, TCU, Baylor, and things like that, uh, we all expect Texas to win those games, right? And it just doesn't seem like as difficult as going to at Kentucky, to South Carolina, who's one of the toughest venues to play in, uh, you know, at Tennessee. It just doesn't feel as difficult. You know, even going to Fayetteville is difficult. And when I look at the grind of the SEC, it popped in my mind last year, Arizona football. They won 10 games. They went 9-3 and three in the Pac-12, 7-2 and two in conference. Uh, and they ended up beating Oklahoma in the Alamo Bowl. So Arizona played a non-conference game against Mississippi State at the beginning of the year, and they lost. All right. Mississippi State finished 5-7 and seven and 1-7 and seven in conference. In the SEC, Mississippi State started four and zero, y'all. All right, they started four and zero with a win over Arizona. Mississippi State fans thought that they were about to have a year. They said, "Hey, eight wins, maybe nine. No, it didn't happen. All right, and that's due to the grind of the SEC. Uh, week in, week out, you can't take." You can't take a day off. And people want to throw in, oh, well, what happened to Auburn with New Mexico State? Look, it's the grind of the SEC. They got snake bit. But ask Alabama how difficult that game was the following weekend when they come into Jordan-Hare. Uh, ask Georgia how difficult that game was when they come into Jordan-Hare. Uh, it's just a grind, man, because when you look at it on paper, Auburn should have never been in either one of those games, either one of them. Uh, it never should have happened. We should have lost both of those games by 30-plus. Uh, but we were in that. We were in those moments. We were in those games because of the grind and the atmospheres that each SEC team brings, man. Like, I could point out to you, uh, Arkansas last year, they were starting to get on a little bit of a roll during the season. Arkansas comes to the swamp and wins. Nobody had that on their bingo card. Nobody. And Arkansas went into the swamp and won. It's a grind. It's just a different grind. And I think that's kind of the thing that Jake was saying where a lot of people like misunderstood because I think the Big 12 and the SEC are, are a little opposite. Uh, they're on the opposite ends of each other, in my opinion. But I do think we got the two best schools that you could offer out of anybody in the country. That's why I'm so excited. Yeah, and, and I think if you take the, I, th I think a big part of that too is that if you take the middle of the pack SEC teams, you know, you, you named off a couple, you know, you think of Mississippi State, Arkansas, maybe even Missouri on their usual years. I won't, I won't yeah. add them in right now just because I think Drinkowitz is doing good. Maybe South Carolina. You put those over in the Big 12, and, and they're maybe in the top five, top three, top five of the Big 12 yep. each year. Whereas you put okay. those, Big 12 teams in there, they're lower middle of the pack SEC. Yep. Uh, you know, and so I, I definitely think it is it. much different. Uh, and and I, I've always seen that. I've always understood that. It's just, it gets, you know, I can understand people from outside of the SEC because I've been there yeah. listening to it. Like, I, I get it. I don't care. Like, 
think you're the best just because you have to play all these teams. <laughs> who cares? Shut up about it. And it gets yeah. annoying. That's the only reason why people disagree with that. Um, because either they don't, for one, they don't understand it and they don't actually dive in and look at those teams. Uh, or two, it just gets annoying. And that's where I always was. Just shut up about it. Uh, it's not a top heavy conference. Um, 